What's up YouTube, I'm Mike, and today I'm gonna try to shoot a, a different kind of video on this channel. I've been trying to get my wife on here to talk about a variety of topics, and she's always busy cooking, cleaning, taking care of the kids, homeschooling. She's a very busy girl, and then by the time she's not busy with all that stuff, it's, you know, kind of our time, and I, and, and, you know, we, the videos just don't get made. So, despite the fact that we're in the middle of a home remodel and our house is a fucking disaster, I decided to come in here while she's cooking and basically just kind of interview her on camera about a variety of topics and see if this makes for entertaining video. I was considering doing this live, but like I said, our house is a, is a total wreck and doing live from a cell phone camera, I don't think the audio is going to be good. So we're going to try it like this and then maybe, maybe we'll do some live content eventually. So let me spin you around here. This is my wife, Sarah. Say hi. Hello. What are we having for dinner tonight? We're having Gigi's stew. Gigi's stew. Mmm. I definitely should be eating right now, shouldn't I? It's going to take a while. So, as you can see in the corner over there is a dishwasher. That is a Bosch 800 series dishwasher. If anybody was looking for a deal on a dishwasher, we bought that like six, seven, eight years ago. And it's been a phenomenal machine. Uh, but it started having replacement code, throwing codes, and I put a couple parts in it. We decided we were done with it, so we bought a new Bosch, and we're going to unload that one for a couple hundred bucks. So hit me up if you need a Bosch 800 series dishwasher. My whole channel is just turning into hawking everything that we, we don't need anymore. So why don't we start off talking about Primo, which I think is going to be the most interesting topic for this audience. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you came to the decision to use Primo and how it's going so far. Give us all the details. Okay. Well, I've been on, I was taking some testosterone and I was wanting to get off that if possible um, because it does have virilizing side effects. I wanted to see if I would have the same side effects on the Primo. And so I started, I got off of the testosterone. I was only on three milligrams a week. Isn't that right? And then, no, 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 that's not right. Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. And then um, I got on the, I started at 24 milligrams a week of Primo. And I think I just finished week three. Or did I just finish week four? Um, I have to look. And then um, just to try and see how that goes. Um, and I, so far I like it a lot, to be honest. But I'm not sure, I'm not sure it's going to be worth it, but I really like it. Um, so, um, so far in week three or four, how would you compare Primo to using, say, five milligrams of Anavar? Oh, it's definitely, it's different in the way it feels. Like the Anavar is like a jolt. I don't feel that in the, with the Primo at all, but I do feel um, a lot of the effects. So I have significant strength gains. I have um, a lot of... The, the psychological effects, I kind of enjoy. So, it doesn't seem to give me, and you might disagree, so you have to weigh in, but I don't feel like I have the same Varbot that I tend to get. No, you don't. But I definitely have like the more, like logical, little more aggressive, like, um, how, would you, how would you describe that? Yeah, it's like you're more like a man. It's phenomenal. Yeah. It's like you're a man with a, with a smoking hot female body. Well, and I have like, it's not like I don't have feelings, but there have been a number of times where I was like, man, I think that previously I probably be, would be weeping over this Instagram reel. And instead I'm like, oh. so it's kind of mute, maybe a little bit muted, but not like, not like taking away my emotions. Yeah. So that's nice. It is definitely um, giving me some strength gains. In fact, I started seeing strength gains in the gym by the end of the first week, which I don't know. Yeah, so she reports, she, she, she messaged me in the gym, was like, dude, my, my strength is through the roof. And I panicked at first, because it's like, oh my God, I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure that's Primo, but Primo should not be putting strength gains on her in week one. I decided to believe that it was a combination of the test going out of her system and the, and the Primo coming up that was probably leading to that. And it seems to be true, because you're not, like, so, so what, was, what are your side effects? 
I was on the three milligrams of test a week and I switched to, and I went off on a Sunday. Um, I didn't take it. And then, so then the following Sunday I did the Primo. So it had been two yeah. weeks since my last test shot when I started the Primo. So it was definitely still coming out of my system. Um, and then, but I'm having, so the first thing I noticed was strength gains. And then after that, some psychological effects. Um, I was noticing um, acne. I'm definitely dealing with acne more, but I couldn't tell if it was the change in hormones overall or what it was at first. It kind of blew up and then it went away. And then now, I mean, now you can see my shoulders. I don't know if you can see, but. Let's see. On my shoulders. Yeah, so I was so noticing that one last night. It, but it's, it's very minor compared, let's see your face. It's very minor compared to where you have been. Like when you were on test oh at Anavar, it was like fucking out of control. It was humiliating. Yeah. And um, so I'm definitely not having it like that, but I am having it way more than I was having just on the three milligrams of test. So that's really kind of disappointing to me that the Anavar doesn't seem to cause the acne in the same way. I have a little bit, but not in the same way. Although it's not been real bad on my face and it's not, the test gives me the, the cystic acne, the big cystic acne, and that's not what this is. So it's not the big pain, it's not painful. It's not, you know, days and days it comes up, you get rid of it, it goes away, but it's still enough that it's definitely embarrassing. Um, but I'm having, so my, my strength has been going up pretty exponentially in the gym. <laughs> To be honest, it's which we're pretty way. excited about at 24 milligrams of Primo because basically we we started this 24 milligrams of Primo is like a is like a super low dose test subject because she's had so many problems dosing androgens in the past yeah. and so people were saying like 50 milligrams minimum. I, I I came across a female who literally said for bodybuilding purposes taking anything less than 200 is a waste of your time. Although she also admitted that she wrecked her voice on 200 milligrams. So obviously we were not going that high. We're very happy to be seeing really any results at all at 24 milligrams. Well, and I haven't, I hadn't been having, um, excuse me, on the testosterone, I have the uh, increased body hair. That's been a great frustration for me, but I don't have, I haven't noticed anything significant on the Primo at all as far as body hair goes. Um, one of the reasons I was wanting to get off the testosterone also was because I seem to be losing my hair up here and uh, it doesn't seem to be getting any worse on the Primo, but it also doesn't seem to be getting any better. So I don't really know about that. Um, I am also having uh, increased clitoral sensitivity, which is fabulous, like in the best way possible. I seem to be a little more orgasmic. I have to get in the pantry. I seem to be more orgasmic um, than, I, than I was for a while there, which is awesome. Feels really good. Um, I don't know that it's making my sex drive increase very much. You'll have to say what you think about that, but I definitely think it's making me much more, uh, more aware. Or I think about sex during the day more than I was. I. So like, I wouldn't say that her sex drive per se in the way that a man's sex drive is just like nagging and, and, and rampant, uh, but she's very, very agreeable to sex at night. Uh, we've been having protracted periods of foreplay just depending on how orgasmic she is. So like our usual, our usual repertoire currently is that we watch porn and she plays with a toy while she goes down on me. And this can be, this can go on for 45 minutes sometimes. It could be as, as little as 10 or 12 minutes, basically until she orgasms or quits. And um, more often than not in the last week, it's been an orgasm and, and, and a relatively quick one. And then she is, I think every single time this week, orgasmed again during sex, which is very typical of her orgasmic response when she's on androgens and not so typical of it when she's not on androgens uh but like like a psychological like i'm not noticing any like real psychological drive during the day no. but it's like when it's go time she has no problem just getting right in the mood and i don't which is pretty good and, and, I, and by, by my own admission it's not like i'm 
you know, we got kids, we got shit going on. It's not like either one of us is really driven all day. Well, and I was feeling like before, um, for a little while, every night was like, you know, if we do, it's great. If we don't, it's great. Whatever, I'm okay. And um, of course we always do. But that was kind of my attitude going in. And like just this past week, which I just looked and um, yesterday, or this is Wednesday, Sunday was my third shot. So, um, so you're on week three? Yeah, I started on the 21st. It's the 28th, 5th, the 12th. Today's the 4th. Or 11th. Today's the 14th. Oh, so, oh, 14th. So, yeah, I'm, I'm two and a half weeks in. And so, um, but I don't think... So it's still very early. Yeah. But I don't think that I was really starting to have that uh, drive into the last week or so. That, so that things could be going to get better. When it's getting to, to like our time, it's like, okay, yeah, it's here. Although I'm not all day like yeah. pent up. When it gets here, it's not not like maybe we will, maybe we won't. Yes, yeah, so like I come, I'll go, I'll be fucking around in the bathroom. I have a hard time transitioning at night, usually because I'm all spun up from making videos and researching a different, th million different things, or just being off in my own little world. It just yeah, trend. Trend has me just fucking in a in a separate mind space. And so I'll kind of be dragging ass honestly in the bedroom, and like I'll I'll come out of the shower or something, and she'll have the bed with our squirt sheets already put on them and and like she's got her toys out like so so it's like she's not like climbing the walls for it during the day but literally when we go into the bedroom at night she's she's the one that's like i'm ready let's go like oh, wait waiting for you to shut up i'll be like yammering on about some video i made or how, how funny i thought i was and she's like get the computer let's go so uh, that's definitely been different one of the other things that i've noticed a lot is that i was having um really right right that first week it was like day two or three i think it was day two it, i guess it was peaking that first shot was peaking and suddenly i was like um you know getting out popping out of bed and getting things done and i was like why am i so motivated i'm way, usually way lazier than this and so it was like i think you're the one that was like maybe it's the primo but then it was like okay let's go to the gym not like uh oh, gotta go to the gym Got to go to the gym night. It was more of, yes, tonight's a gym night. And so then it was going to the gym. And even with COVID in the middle or, or whatever we had. Yeah. We um, and it was still like, I was motivated. Motivated to get in the gym. I've been a little tweaky for sure. Yeah, she's I'm been very she's house. been very driven all day long every day, which is kind of working out in, in both our favors because I'm on the trend. So that's got me spun. And I'm in there making video after video. I, I'm Sometimes I make twice as many videos as I actually release because I make... I, the, the number of times I've made a 45 minute video and then just deleted the whole thing because I didn't like it, it happens a lot. So the number of videos you guys see coming out of me actually landing online, sometimes I shoot three other videos in a day that I don't keep. And so I'm pretty much constantly busy and they're working on something. She's constantly working with the kids and they're homeschooling and decorating Allison's homeschool room. Allison, we have a, we're using the spare, bed, spare, spare bedroom in our house. It's like a classroom. And when we get all of our camping stuff out, I'll show you all the amazing work Sarah's done in there. She's turned it into this amazing little mini classroom. And so, like I said, we've got remodeling going on. I'm looking for a job. It's been pretty hectic, but um, she's staying very, very, very driven all day long. And that's, like she said, it's, it's not very typical of her. Um, one of the other things though that I don't want to forget is the pain at the injection site. Cause like, yeah, that talk was, about that. That the first when I took it doesn't hurt when I pin it, and then but so the first time I pin it on Sunday and on Tuesday morning I woke up and I was like, what? I pinned it in my right hip, right? No, my I pinned it in my left hip because I woke up, I sleep on my left side, and I was like, oh my god, what did I do? I'm like checking the bed. Was I laying on something? I had a, a wash rag in the bed trying to soak up what the squirt mats don't soak up and so i was like did that somehow i keep checking it doesn't look bruised and i think again you were the one that was like maybe it was the primo where i pinned the primo and it kind of traveled a little bit and over the course of the week i was dreading doing it again i was like i don't know if i can do that it hurts so much to walk to move to sit to lay anything and then so on sunday i pinned it in my right shoulder 
and the, the second pin I pinned to my right shoulder and Tuesday morning I woke up and it was sore but it wasn't quite so unbearable you know I don't know maybe it's I, I worked it a lot and I don't know then this past Sunday again I pinned my right shoulder and I could feel it it was a little bit sore for like a day and that was it so Hopefully that's getting better because that was missing. Yeah, so we were concerned. She's using QSC uh, Primo E, and I had a bad experience with their test E that was just causing a lot of inflammation and whelps. And and usually, like when you start, like I told her when she started pinning this compound, she was likely gonna have pain at the injection point that would that would come on about day two, would last till that about day four, and then as her body started getting used to the compound, that she would probably not notice the pain anymore. And that seems to be what's happening. It seems to be that her body's adjusting and she's not experiencing the same degree of post injection pain that she was agreed yes uh, absolutely <laughs> anything I'm else trying to look and see if there was anything else that i wrote down about it because i've been oh the i think that so i take estrogen and my estrogen seems to be a little bit low uh it's, yeah I, we, I feel like we had it really dialed in when i was on with the testosterone and everything and then it seems like um, self lubricating is taking a little bit longer. I don't, I don't know what it, my joints are not feeling great on the Primo. They don't, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling my age for sure. But, um, I, I was having kind of this dryness that was frustrating, especially I think I was fighting a UTI for a while. And I think that's because it has to do with the amount of friction during sex. And I don't know, it was, it was definitely uncomfortable and it, it lasted for a while so um i don't i don't know yeah she definitely the, the primo definitely seems to be drying her out already this is something we may have to be concerned about as we go on or we may have to tinker with her estrogen dose because uh on on both fronts both oral and vaginal i'm noticing uh definitive differences in in lubrication and so uh, it's not something that can't be overcome. It's just, it's just there, it, there is definitively a difference. So is that affecting my joints? Is that Almost certainly. Was, yeah, I mean, yeah, like so. That's what I was saying. Like the one, the one thing that was nice when I had the super high estrogen was my joints felt great. My, that my joints felt better when my estrogen was through the fucking roof than they felt in a very long time, which is one of the things that motivated me to get DECA because I just, I hate how these, my joint pains have gotten really bad as I've gotten older. And so, yeah, if your estrogen is crashing, then certainly, or lowering, you, you're, that, that could certainly be playing a factor. And not only if the, if there's some kind of AI effect with the Primo, I also went off the testosterone that was probably aromatizing. Yeah, so you so lost, lost the aromatization from the tea and now you're drying out a little bit from the from the primo and so it's kind of a double whammy we'll just have to play with the dosing and everything and see you know but the thing is is that obviously you're trying to you know you're chasing a little bit of that anivar body or you're that's what you seem to be looking for is can i can i achieve the anivar body with something that's not oral that i can inject and run long term and so obviously we don't want we, we want, we want the minimal amount of estrogen that'll allow you to function right. without putting a whole lot of water on your body and your belly's looking really great. And let's see, let's see a little bit, a little bit of the bicep flex. Let's see what we got. So, yeah, so you can see that, let me, let me, let me zoom in. So you can see the cuts in her biceps, uh, on the, I don't know about the lighting in here. Yeah. Her biceps are definitely starting to pop. Her shoulders are, are, are looking li like nice and toned. Um, she, it's, it's all coming back. So that's one of the things that we've been experimenting with is trying to find out, you know, she's, she's sort of always perpetually chasing like if, if the, a ghost. Like if, if you're following the free OnlyFans account, you'll see a lot of the pictures that I post, the non-nudes where she's in a bikini and she's got really, really she's got a really lean body with visible abs and her shoulders are capped and that was during a period of time that she was on a lot of anivar and so we have a lot of pictures of her body when she I was, was in testosterone and two maybe yeah we have a lot of pictures when she was in really peak condition and it's it's fucked up for a woman because um you know you are sort of always chasing the dragon uh, a little bit you know you you get your body to a certain state 
you know you can't stay on Anavar forever without virilization and then you don't look quite as good uh, without it. But I do feel like, I, I think I get this, this feeling of like inadequacy then when I go off of that and I don't have those same androgens and so then I look like a, like a regular girl. Yeah. And then I've got some major, perhaps some body dysmorphia going on, certainly some, some uh, self-esteem issues where it comes from my, to my body, body image issues maybe. But you know that's all in your head. Well, it's easy to think that, to say that, but. The, you know, the thing that, that she's referencing, she knows that I'm, that I'm very turned on by her, you know, her and of our body. And I, I, I am, but I think it's, I think it's just fucking uh, phenomenal. But it's, I also fully understand in, in the same way that, you know, trend, the trend, the trend aesthetic is not maintainable. Like, unless you're like me and you just are completely retarded and decide to run it year round at massive cost to your health. Um, the day I stop running trend, I'm going to lose a mountain of my aesthetic. And so, you know, the, the thing for me that, you know, the, the, the thing about for guys that's unfair for girls is I can choose to run compounds year round and just go, you know, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about my cholesterol or I'm not going to worry about, you know, this or that. And with a girl, it's not the same because if she, she could, she could make the same decision. Well, I'm not going to worry about my cholesterol. I'm not going to worry about this or this or that particular health marker. But if she runs any androgen, even low amounts of, of Anivar or low amounts of Primo for just consistently for years on years on, on end, she's going to have virilizing effects. And that's what she seems to be trying to greater or lesser degree to prevent. Yeah. I'd like to mitigate those as much as possible. I don't, I have, I had a, a little bit of concern about my voice because I, f it feel, I feel, you feel raspy. raspy, but I also was just having that, whatever, but I hope was about pleurisy, but like some allergy stuff, what appeared to be allergy type stuff too. So I'm hoping that's all that was, but. So where are you at psychologically? Like, uh, let's say that the, let's say that your strength continues to improve and your body, you know, your body aesthetic continues to approve, improve, and you're enjoying, you're enjoying the experience that you're getting in the gym and you're not having, you know, the crippling acne that you had, but you do notice that your voice is deepening and your clit is enlarging. Will those two factors alone be enough to cause you to say, fuck it, I can't do this anymore and, and pull the plug on the whole experiment? Um, I guess it depends on how, t how deep my voice is getting or how, like, to what degree am I having this? Cause my, whatever clitoral enlargement I'm having right now is only a benefit to me. So it's yeah. not bothering you. It doesn't seem to be, I don't know. I don't know what's normal, but it doesn't seem to be anything terribly out of the normal. Um, apparently some of these people can see it too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Some of you know exactly what her clitoris looks like. Um, um, but, but I think that uh, I do not want a little penis. And I, I don't want to sound like a grandpa. But, but is, is the decline in that direction going to be enough to cause you to stop doing Primo? Or androgens at all? I think that, um, I definitely think there is a stopping point. <laughs> oh, uh, you have. We're not very close to it. Yet. Yeah. See, the guys in the audience can already tell this. Like, yeah, she's fucking done. <laughs> so, so let's just say this. So, like, let's say hypothetically speaking, you know, by the end of this primo cycle, you're loving it. The effects are phenomenal, but it does, it does mute your voice to the point where it's no longer a question. It's like, okay, this girl sounds like a girl who you know, who does steroids, like her voice is damaged. At that point, do you think you would consider other compounds? Are you asking if I'm going to do trend? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know I don't that our marriage, do I don't know that our marriage can survive you on trend, no. even, even in tiny doses. I don't think so either. You know, but I, I'm just curious, like, you, you know, would, would you, has enough trouble would you, what, what, if you get to a point where it, it, kind of a point of no return with your voice, and, you know, would you, would you consider throwing back in test or throwing in Anivar and trying to really 
double, triple down, or do you feel like you just know. really just looking to to kind of clean up what you have and not really grow? Yeah, I don't know that I would do that because it's already like when I go to buy dresses, my back's too big, my so which is my favorite thing to train anyway, and now I'm not even really training it because it's too big to fit in any clothes. So if I'm, you know, typically a size two and something's even smaller, but now my back is like a size four or six. And so I can't, you know, we go shopping and there's nothing that fits or I'm spilling out. Or I well, we've like got plenty of dresses that fit right now. We, we, we definitely ran into some problems when, when they're not, accurately sized when it's like a small extra small and you're trying you've got plenty of you've got plenty of twos in there that you that you fit perfectly but fine we in do better we have some fours on or whatever sure. and not you know the really beautiful like oh my that god I, that i really a lot of the yeah you don't have any smoking hot beautiful dresses oh my god i have tons we, of them we need I'm you saying, we're in there and i'm crying because i'm like is that back fat or is that and you're no, like it's no lats. it's lats and i'm like well this dress isn't made for lats they're not made for well lats. what we need to do is a little is a little fashion shoot with you we, we haven't taken any pictures in all these new dresses which is a fucking travesty and that would give us some more content for the free only fans page so we need to get get up on that and let, let other people be the judge of how your body looks with a little bit of muscle, but still wearing very elegant, formal, you know, cocktail, you know, formal dresses. We bought her some very pretty, you know, love, fashionable items. And I love formal wear. Love, love. love. So that, that's what we need to, we need to focus on at least getting some pictures of those, if not video. Um, so speaking of the, um, OF pages. Uh, we're, we're, we're growing. We're growing a substantial audience on the free, which some of whom have decided to pay for a couple of tidbits. Some of the tidbits have been rather revealing tidbits of you. How are you? How are you feeling about this 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 program so far? I try not to think about it too much. Well, you're creative in the in the. You're, you're, you you get creative and be, kinky in the. I can be in a creative state. In a creative state that's not like. So you feel like it's easier it's for you. not the, the creative state. Do you think it's easier for you to write like a little caption or something and then kind of disconnect from the content that's actually being posted with it? Yeah, and I think, I mean, uh, yeah. I think that it would be different. Like, if there was more. I think one of the things that makes it hard to get really comfortable with sometimes is that there's not a lot of interaction on there, like from the people that Who are, are viewing there, it. That are viewing it, yeah. So it's like, I don't know, do they like this? Is it good? Is it bad? Do they wish it was something else? Is it like, I don't know. And so you try to just be yourself, and at the same time, it's like, I don't know. It yeah, feels it, like if there was more interaction, then it would be great it would to feel more. It like would I definitely be great. Something on both sides to get more feedback. Like, you know, obviously we have it priced high. And the reason we have it priced high is because we value our privacy and we don't want any old body to just be able to look. I don't, I'm not just sharing my wife with any old body. I mean, technically I am, but you're gonna have to pay for it. You know, I'm not, I'm not giving it away for free. I value her too much. And uh, so like if you, if you sub and you look at all that, con like if you sub for $50 and you look at all that content and then you choose to not renew, you know, filling out the, giving the answers to why you didn't renew is helpful. Is it because we don't produce content enough? Is it because there's not enough videos? Is it because you think we're both ugly? Is it because you you vomited and, 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 and couldn't even get through any of the content? You know, like, is, is it because there's content that's missing? If you see something that you do like, it's helpful to get feedback you know, because that that's inspiring. It's just like on YouTube, you know, like if I make a video and, you know, it has 300 views in the first, you know, couple of hours and 50 people telling me, man, this is a great video. I agree 100%. Keep, keep killing it. We love your videos. We look forward to your videos. That inspires me to make more videos, you know? And so when, there, when there's like not a small number of people looking at pictures and we can see that there's looks and then you get a handful of likes but the vast majority of people don't interact in any way it makes you think god is are we are we embarrassing ourselves with this is this you know yes, is this we're embarrassing ourselves in some way we're embarrassing <laughs> is this should we be taking taking this down right away 
Um, and so really, to me, the OnlyFans has just, has just been an extension of the personality type that I've been displaying on YouTube for so long. It's, it's just honest. It's like, you know, it's raw and it's just, it's just a part of our marriage, you know? Like, I, I sit and talk about all the gory details of, you know, my cycles, what, you know, my gains, my struggles in the gym, how that affects my marriage, what it's like raising kids, my political views, my, you know, like, I, I, we, I and we share our lives in these extreme ways and then for so many people it's like, but you draw the line at what goes on behind closed doors in the bedroom. And I get that not everybody's even interested in looking at that. And that's fine. Like, I don't know that, you know, if, if uh, Vigorous Steve or Greg Doucette or, you know, More Plates, More Dates had an OnlyFans, I probably wouldn't subscribe to it. I don't, I don't really have any need to see that. And so I can appreciate that. But for those of you who are interested, um, feedback is good. Just like, you know, good there in the same way that it is here so that you know we're not wasting your money and our time you know we don't want to produce content where somebody you know forks over fifty dollars and then they're like oh my god this is not what i was expecting so let us know what you expect you know if, if you get there and you don't it's not what you expect let us know what you expect and maybe we'll make it happen um that's the other thing is we are happy to do custom content <laughs> if we know someone has an interest that makes it even more exciting because then you feel like you're, you know, you're... The pepper got me. It's like a Make-A-Wish Foundation. Oh my God. It's like, it's pornographic Make-A-Wish Foundation. What would you like to see so that we can grant your wish? Oh my God. <laughs> Anyways, enough of that. Um, anything you'd like to say in closing on your Primo cycle? This video's gone on so long that my camera stopped. Um, mm, not that I can think of. I thought it might affect my appetite. It doesn't seem to have done that. Um, okay. I don't know. All right, well, we'll use this as a test. I'll throw it up there. We'll see how it sounds, what it looks like, how, how heinous our house looks in the background. Oh and then maybe we'll do, we'll do some more videos like this while you're cooking so that I can actually get you on the channel. Okay. And then it's an excuse to spend time together while you're cooking. Mm -hmm. See? I love that. I love when you're in here with me. It's a win-win. Yeah. All right. Thank you, dear. Thank you to everyone who's watching this video. As always, we'll see you on the next one.